Once again, we have the return of a legendary hiker who's been searching for the mysterious M Cave and as well Kenny Veach. A part of the mystery as a whole, Jay Silverheels has finally returned once again with the energy more now than ever before and as well the focus too. Ranging from some videos on his channel to do with the map analysis and hike route locations to actively participating in Jay Chuck's recent videos and Jeff Clark's within the comments section. Jeff Clark did let me know in recent time and sent me a screenshot regarding some interesting points by Jay Silverheels on the Kenny Veach case. I'm going to have a look at it today to see whether I agree or not with Jay Silverheels. And as well, Silverheels did mention a few comments about me, so we'll also get to that later on in this video. Welcome to those that are currently here watching. And as you know, with a Jay Silverheels video, you can't go without the number one mascot, the personal representation of Silverheels and the hiking pole population out there. The penguin is back, eyes locked on, okay? So hopefully Silverheels is prepared for this, and just in general, other people. Whilst yes, light-hearted at times in this video, at first, we need to lock on with some of the maybe more serious comments made, and then we can go from there. But I believe one viewer known as Skeptical, shout out to Skeptical for their support in the channel, says that they do like penguins. The penguin waves back. There you go. That's what it looks like up close. I'd say it looks fairly realistic, to be fair. A little bit fat, but oh well. There, there you go. So, we're going to get straight into the comments of Silver Heels and go from there. So as you see on screen this, I believe from J Chuck's channel, Jeff Clark passed on this screenshot to me. I can't remember which video it was on, but I did find the other comments myself. We'll look at them later. But first of all, I mean, I think this might've been taken from desktop. My God, Jeff Clark, what are you doing, man? It's so sadistic. I need to be locked up in a psychological hospital, man. Cause we need to put the glasses on. Party is over, but the glasses are back on, man. Look at the text, it's so small. How are you supposed to read that? God, smaller than a peanut. But you know what? I can see the text. If you can't, don't worry. I will read it out to you, okay? So Jay Silverheels says, that's what I said three years ago after I started researching the case. I spotted people saying she was the devil. So I think this is in response to one of J. Chuck's videos on Sharon Pilgrim, the girlfriend. I could be wrong, but I think that's what J. Silverheels was referring to here. Saying that other people regarded Sharon Pilgrim as the devil and was in on it, Kenny's disappearance. And she said suicide because we know you want that house. J. Silverheels says, I jumped right on it and said, you people are crazy. You could be sued. I also pointed out, no wonder she shies away from posting. She uploaded great videos of her and Kenny's adventures and was chastised for it. As a matter of fact, it was the tirade against Sharon or Sherry that prompted me to begin replying to comments and eventually to start posting videos was based on the unjust crucifixion of Sharon by an angry witch hunting lynch mob at a time posting preposterous accusations based on nothing but the fact that they wanted to believe someone killed him that he could not possibly have been suicidal it was everything she stormed into the house and took everything like the hell she oh yeah as silver hills would say like hell she did she was more married to him than the family was also, you misspoke. Not a big deal. You said people searching, there was no trace of Kenny Beach. That's simply not true. The people searching them and others, no trace of Kenny Beach has been found. Actually, there was his truck and phone. So considering the area is virtually unsearchable, his remains, if they're out there, have not been found and likely never will. If searchers or cops went into a house and searched it, it could be truly said there was no trace of a person, but not in a vast area. He just hasn't been found yet, wherever he is. And uh, Jay Chuck responds saying, Susan has shown me things that suggest Kenny has been in touch with persons over the years. I do not think Susan Veach is either a sophisticated fabricator nor a serial killer. She has credit on her evidence. 
Now, I think maybe J. Chuck's opinions have swayed back and forth since, like, uh, a ship on the oceans, the sailors getting a bit seasick at times, because I know J. Chuck has defended Sharon Pilgrim in recent time and declared one's love or understanding of her. Well, I'm going to give you my thoughts right now and be realistic. So we're basing it off Jay Silverheel's comment here saying that there was a witch hunt against Sharon or Sharon Pilgrim, Kenny's girlfriend, that there is a possibility that Kenny was suicidal and that's what it resorted to. And the bit about Kenny just simply hasn't been found yet, but could be, it's just the distance and vastness out there. Okay, I'll give you my thoughts. So Silverheels, I can understand the complexity of a witch hunt and you know the impact it can have, the implications, but as well, how it neglects other areas of a case and maybe key people involved. In comparison, to understand that would be the Dylan Rounds case when the likes of Candice Cooley, Dylan Rounds' mother, was you know, crucified over time because of mistakes and inaccuracies made. And whilst, yes, it's valid to acknowledge them, maybe pe some people went in quite hard and others looked into her past, history and behaviour, possible dark past, etc. Yes, it's to try and better understand a case or the case, but was it one-sided? Was it like a witch hunt? Kind of. And, a, you know, a group of people doing the rounds, maybe waves too. Now, when I came about and I was looking into it, I tried to balance it out. Instead of just focusing all in on Candice Cooley and criticising her, what about Justin Rounds and do his points made there valid ones? So whether people liked it or not, I balanced it out for and against strengths, weaknesses with each character in the case. Have I done the same within the Kenny Beach case? I'd hope to think so. But I will argue that I've demonstrated significantly more balance once I moved into the Dylan Rounds case. Will I be able to implement that here or add on to whatever was shown beforehand? Hopefully. Um, there have been times and periods of looking at Sharon Pilgrim, the girlfriend, in suspicious ways. But let me tell you something, Jay Silverheels, whether the girlfriend is innocent or not, she's not done herself any favours in how she approaches situations in real life and online, how she conducts herself. She does appear in suspicious ways. She does sound suspicious at times, and that's on her, right? Links to be made to the Dylan Rounds case, where one of the potential suspects or persons of interest, Kurt Wadsworth, Dylan Rounds' best friend or close friend out there, and Kurt Wadsworth, the way he was acting at times, saying he would be the one to find Dylan, that he really cares about Dylan and it took an impact on him emotionally, and that Kurt was seen cleaning, deep cleaning a trailer, bleaching it completely, was that to remove of any evidence, people suspicious there. Kurt Wadsworth currently, or previously, had an arrest warrant out for him because of some gun-related stuff later on post-case post-disappearance, but still getting into trouble there. And at the time early on of the beginning of Dylan's case opening up and Kurt Wadsworth refusing to take a lie detector test, whilst he might be innocent, he doesn't do himself any favours in how he approaches and responds and reacts. So it's the same with Sharon Pilgrim. The way they may act and behave, they can put a target on their own head and then people will look into it, right? So I have done case studies on Sharon Pilgrim. I have done some research. You like to check that out, Jay Silverheels, or anybody else watching who's new to this channel, check out the Kenny Beach case files. I've covered Sharon Pilgrim, and there's been some interesting findings. And some other people in the background, I think DJ Moore or DJ Reacts, whichever one it was, whichever DJ, they ended up uncovering some of the businesses of Sharon Pilgrim in the past, which have since shut down, gone downhill and gone wrong out of business. Why exactly? I'm sure it's better explained over there, right? And I've also looked at the comments as well of Sharon online and how she reacts. So what I would say is, has Sharon Pilgrim ultimately been crucified? Has there been a witch hunt against her? I would say, based off the proportions, the ratio of the general public population who's involved in this case, full-time, temporary, come and go, whatever, I would say she hasn't. I wouldn't say there's been a full-on witch hunt against a girlfriend, 
might, might be moments within the community, small amounts of people questioning and becoming suspicious. But as a whole, millions of people have come across this case and listened in. Maybe not so much on my channel, but as a whole, and with other channels out there covering the case. I would argue and say a lot of humans out there, the majority, and when I say the majority, I'm not talking about people here, people that actively watch my channel. No, those can think for themselves. These people here can understand and a better understanding as a whole. But as for the general public majority of those out there, the outsiders from my community have given, you know, shown Pilgrim the benefit of the doubt, basically very lenient towards Sharon, Sharon Pilgrim. Because the key thing is, Silverheels, whilst yes, we can transition on to the suicide theory, is it even possible? Is it true or false? And other people are saying, nope, not possible, it wouldn't make any sense, and you, Silverheels, at least in recent time, have been saying, why not? Why can't it be possible? It could, you know, if Sharon says so, then there's a possibility. So it all comes down to whatever Sharon says, that's the truth, right? So when Sharon says Kenny is suicidal, he is. If Sharon says Kenny Reach likely committed suicide, then he did. If Sharon said Kenny is no longer alive, then he's no longer alive. So also when Sharon originally said that she reported Kenny Veach missing two days later, but in actual fact, the police records stated that it was about seven to eight days later. So Sharon lied publicly. Once a liar, always a liar. You know, when someone starts messing up, fumbling with their words or their accuracy in what they say, what happens next? What else have they got wrong? What else do they state, but it actually means something else? That's what we need to look into. And I think it's been heavily underappreciated and under-acknowledged, right? I might have to do more videos in the future, okay? Because I do think that the majority of the human population that come across this case, but don't bother watching my videos, are very ignorant to the fact that there is research there is evidence to highlight that the girlfriend Sharon Pilgrim has lied at times, has shown themselves up in suspicious ways. And it's all documented on my channel. You need to check it out. You need to do research. Let me know, Jay Silverheels, if you've seen those videos before. And if you have, what's caused you to change your thoughts? Now, we'll get more into that shortly. But just to refer back, Jay Silverheels said for the last three years or so, whenever he got involved to begin with, 2020 onwards, I would say, right? Because um, before, well, after Sean Hall, like a Jeff Clark, I came along, 2020, and then everybody else came along after that. So Jay Chuck, Jay Silverheels, Mystery Hikes, yeah, SB Vegas Adventures, Aqua Sugar even got involved, etc., etc. The list goes on, right? So Silverheels is stating that he got involved and inspired within this case, this mystery, mainly because of people calling out the girlfriend and being suspicious of her. That was the main reason for Silverheels to get involved in the first place. Interesting. Jeff Clark's initial interest was the M Cave mystery itself. Yeah, Kenny Beach missing, but the mystery of the cave itself and the desert out there. That's what got Jeff Clark involved and interested and hands-on. I think Jay Chuck more so motivated in trying to recover Kenny or trying to honour Kenny in the process. Different motives for different people, that's understandable. What about me? As for myself, I, I claim, not claim, I state it as a whole, an all-rounder. This is not just a simple mystery. This is a two-in-one mystery, which along the way has branched out to multiple sub-mysteries. Whether they're directly linked or not, it's revealed other unusual stuff out there. The fact that a person has supposedly gone missing out there in the desert got my interest in the past because I'm into mysteries, you know, on and off. And from 2015 onwards, when I heard about it, I've been looking at it since, on and off, and then 2020, nailed it down and covered it myself. 
just because it right place, right time. I felt like, let's give it a try. And it, it was acknowledged and I thought, okay, well, people have acknowledged it, so I'll just keep on going and this is where I am now. So it's turned out well, but the interest has maintained. I would say that the mystery of the cave itself and the environment is just as interesting as the missing person. Has my interest changed though with time, with the research done, the findings collected, the evidence to suggest that this person isn't technically missing or dead, but they're actually elsewhere, and that this person over here could have helped, you know, in the cover-up, etc. Does it change my interest? Does it make me less or more interested? I'd say I'm still at the same level of interest for the hikes, for the searches of the cave. I'd say I'm probably a bit lower down. Not so much in interest, but trying to understand it all because of being away from the case and community and whilst other people have been hiking out there, trying to catch up with it all, it can take time because yes, it's going to the same spot or the roughly the same area and trying different canyons, ravines and stuff. And maybe going around the outside of it, the outskirts. You could say it's a bit of a controlled location, but from different angles and perspectives to try and um, get back up to date with everything and what's been checked, what hasn't, then it could be considered overwhelming. You know, it's different if you're a viewer. If you're a viewer, you're just simply watching, consuming. But when you're a creator, you're creating and you have to try and consume at the same time when catching up on other bits of material. If you're actively doing it, it'll be a lot easier to keep up with everything. But when you slow down or stop as a whole, moving on to other stuff, the piles clog up and build. So to get back through it all, you might have to sieve through bits and bobs along the way, right? But regardless of findings along the way, whether it's debunked this, debunked that, or reinforced that, it the interest is still there, and that's why I still cover it. And, you know, it's good that people are still actively participating here and also very active. Like, as soon as a Kenny Veach video comes out, people are coming out quick to watch, to learn, or make sense of the matter. So that's good to see. But it's interesting when people do return back as well, viewers or creators, and Jay Silverheels is one, and that's why we're creating this video here as well, trying to understand his mindset behind the likes of Sharon Pilgrim, the girlfriend. Jay Chuck has defended her. Jay Silverheel seems to be defending her. And, you know, in a normal situation, if a normal situation does actually exist out there, you've got the girlfriend, you know, and their loved one, it supposedly, has gone missing. Obviously, you'd be concerned and worried and why would they be responsible for the person's disappearance? That's not what I'm thinking, right? I think Jay Silverhills mentioned something in his comment about the suggesting of that Kenny was killed or taken out by the girlfriend. I don't think that if the girlfriend played some role in some way, it, more than likely in assisting Kenny's disappearance, whether it be taking him somewhere to a different location, picking him up from where he left off at that hike crew and leaving his vehicle behind in the desert, or even just communication and contact with other resources and people out there, certain family members or friends to help all together coordinate Kenny moving on elsewhere. You know, I know some people could say, well, it sounds like some big coordinated operation, but you know, People are capable of many different things and if they've got the motives, they may like it a certain way and have certain methods so they try and remove all traces possible so it can't be linked back to them or it being linked back to a cover-up, right? But I just wouldn't be surprised if the girlfriend assist in some way or another with Kenny's disappearance. Not so much in actually taking him out, but taking him away to another location, right? That's, that's my thoughts there. Let me know what you think, Jay Silverheels. But as I was saying, the way the girlfriend has behaved at times, and I think Silverheels and Jay Chuck have acknowledged that uh, her content, her video uploads are great, beautiful, but have been deterred and less likely to upload now because of p the resistance from the general public and the outlook on, you know, the girlfriend Sharon. I'm thinking, well, once again, it's not exactly a witch hunt because the majority of people have given Sharon the benefit of doubt in believing her and what she says. 
Just because she's the girlfriend, everybody has to nod their head and the majority too. Just because Sharon Pilgrim is in the mental health field, then it basically means anything she pulls out the rear end is true and that's it, gospel. Everybody nod their head. I don't know, it, it just seems like maybe one person could be abusing or using their position and power and potential depth of knowledge in convincing the masses and sheeple within the case, the general public that come along and believing a certain narrative. Take in mind, Sharon was wording it roughly as, I think Kenny Beach could have committed suicide. Not that he did, but he could have. So you could flip it around and say even Sharon's not exactly too sure about the situation. Does she even know what she's talking about? That could be another criticism by others out there, right? I'm just throwing it all out there from different perspectives. But with some of the comments, and as well, the videos that she's uploaded to her channel, three or four videos, I think it's only like three videos. One to do with some old footage of Kenny and her out somewhere in a desert place, I don't know if it was Arizona or somewhere in Vegas, Nevada. Um, not much to it, Kenny picking up a snake, that's about it. I mean, we can always look back at that in a different perspective, but for now, that's just how it appeared. The other video was more of a, like a slideshow photo book in memory and honour of Kenny. You know, she misses him and just showing photos from the past and happy times, right? As like what other people would do, whether it be publicly online or with their own little slideshow or photo book albums in real life when they look back at the past and reflect on that person who's no longer with them, you know, that type of stuff. Uh, and then the final video that was uploaded was the unreleased footage from Kenny Veach's M Cave Hike video from his own channel. And that was supposed to be uploaded four to five years ago, I believe. And four to five years ago, Sharon said, this coming November, I'm going to upload it. Four or five years later, it's uploaded in November. 20... Did it say four or five years ago? Well, it was uploaded in 2021. Was it? Or No, it was uploaded in 2022. It must have been early 2022. I'm just trying to think of it coinciding with the documentary, the HLN one. Whenever the HLN documentary debuted, 2021, 2022, between then, of November time, that's the month it came out, I think it was on the 26th or the 28th, on the same day, Sharon posted that unreleased footage of Kenny coinciding with the documentary airing. And while she could say, well, it's just revealing some extra behind the scenes, maybe to promote the documentary, it's weird how Sharon made the promise about four or five years before that, saying that she would post it in November. But it took that many years to then post it in November. That's really weird. That's, that's weird. It makes no sense. And then the other thing that doesn't really make sense is Sharon's comment response to somebody out there, a viewer online, saying they wanted to investigate the case. And Sharon said, oh, I can't wait. This sounds really exciting. I'll let you know if you get close to the truth or not. That sounds like Sharon is playing games, that she knows the truth, but she will only let you know or give you a hint if you get close to the truth. Why Why do we need to play games? Isn't this a serious situation? You know, if you, if you care about someone who's gone missing, you, you do what you can to help, and instead you just sat back playing games, mind games, weird behaviour. I know, I know some people could say, well, it wasn't exactly meant in that way. It might have been innocent. It's still weird behaviour for a serious situation like that. The response by Sharon, right? Once again, Sharon isn't doing herself any favours in how she responds at times. That's what I'm saying, okay? Um, was there anything else to highlight? I, mean, I don't think so there. The suicide claim, well, it's, it's by Sharon, right? That's what she's suggesting. Nobody else has initially pointed it out. It's just that people along the way have just nodded their heads to that initial comment by Sean. So, do I think, you know, do I agree with Silver Heels' comment? Mm, not really. Okay. So let me know what you think down below, Silver Heels. Let's now move on to the other comments by Silver Heels in response to Warlight Wrath. What did he have to say about me? 
Well, here we are. Now, the comment what I found about me is actually on the same video on uh, Jay Chuck's about the one what we just read before. So just to acknowledge one last thing, because I didn't mention it before, the bit about Kenny clues out there, what the vehicle, the loose change phone at the mineshaft. Yes, it suggests Kenny was out there, but the scent also ended at the mineshaft where those the phone and coins were found. So you could argue and say that the scent dropped off at that spot because Kenny turned back, went the way he came, back to his vehicle, waiting to be maybe picked up by somebody else, right? So that was my claim there. Now, here we go. Jay Silverheels, let me get my voice ready. Uh, what? What's going on? Jay Silverheels here, man. Actually, Wrath is the final holdout of we, the people. Wrath is the final holdout. Unlike those logbook and hiking posts out there, man. They're going to get burned down to the ground. But the final holdout, Raph, he puts great weight on the statement she simply made quickly, apparently, long after we went missing, where she said, laughed, or typed, lol. That great, can't wait to figure it out when you find it out. Well, she meant just that, just like anyone might quickly say, Raph read into it like a conspiracy fairy. If she knew or believed he committed suicide, when that would be to find out what Raph did is called overthinking. She did not have a squadron or lawyers watching over her. Every statement as to how it could be analyzed over the years. Also, he keeps bringing it up. She waited days after he was missing. Well, with his style of talking and past actions, it would be gone three or four days or whatever combined with. She's not his mother, so he might well have slept or recovered, etc. So to report a hiking missing person that sleeps overnight or camps and pushes himself to the limit, she waits the alarm at the right time. Would you not a case where a little Billy did not arrive walking home from school at 4.30, but Raph insists on being the last one, holding out with the torch out of long gone by, pointing out, we the finger at the finger of the law, and her... Hold on. Who the hell is Little Billy did not arrive walking home? Little Billy the goat? Oh, no, man. Jeff Clark. Looks like we got another animal to add to the farm. A goddamn goat called Billy. Probably needs locking up in a psychological hospital, man. A few deep-rooted issues and complexes out there. That's for the response. What did J. Chuck say? Uh, J. Silverheels. Uh, Jeff Clark. I know you don't get notifications on that old Opera browser you use, so you probably won't see this comment, but I will pose the question anyway. You're purport to be an amateur psychologist yourself when you state Kenny was overthinking that or this and the little M holes and Kenny became despondent due to YouTube comments etc so why don't you ever psychoanalyze Sharon's statements was it ethical for a professional counselor to be so involved with a 19 year younger guy who she herself accuses of having mental issues up to and including suicidal tendencies was it appropriate for a professional counsellor to post on social media how, in her opinion, Kenny needed mental health medication and Kenny committed suicide? Was it appropriate to let him go off alone into the mountains if she believed the night before he was suicidal? Even if you want to explain away de delaying reporting him missing, these are things are simply not the actions of a caring girlfriend or a professional counsellor. There's some key points there. Was there anything I need to respond to here? Warlike Raph, the final holdout. Well, I did refer to myself more so in recent time as Warlike Last Centurion Standing Raph, like with the Dylan Rounds case being the last one there, covering it. Um, hmm, what else is there? Great, can't wait to see. Right, so, okay, so see what he was saying about. So the comment about missing where she said or laughed or typed, lol, that great, can't wait to see what you find out. Well, she meant just that, just like anyone might quickly say. Just like anyone. Anyone. Oh yeah, anyone would say this before thinking, but what about the girlfriend who supposedly has better standards if she's more knowledgeable and, and there's better ways of communication if she's in the mental health field and yet she comes out with something so reckless and on the spot. Doesn't sound quite professional there, does it? And once again, it's not a game, is it? Okay? From a general public perspective, you could be a bit more casual. You could be interested in the case. You could find it spooky, scary, entertaining, whatever. Because at the end of the day, you're not impacted by it. You know, the person that's gone missing isn't linked to you. So it doesn't matter how you react or respond internally, externally. Um, it can happen. But someone tied within the case, a loved one going missing, and you treat it like a game, you mess about, 
act out, well, that just seemed to stand out more because I thought one would be taking it more seriously than general public if you're tied in with the case or like a, like a, the victim of it, hurt by the outcome. So it does stand out. So I don't think anyone would just quickly come out with that. You know, viewers might, but people tied in the case probably should think before they speak. And uh, not, not, it didn't work out this time. What else? If she knew or believed he committed suicide, then what would be out there to find out? But what Raph did is called overthinking. What, what about? Raph read into it like a conspiracy, but if she knew or believed he committed suicide, then what would there be to find out? What Raph did is overthinking. She did not have a squadron of lawyers watching over her every statement as to how it would be analysed or over the years. So it's all to do with that one comment. But once again, it's not just that one comment. It's overall reporting Kenny missing later. And Sibyl's so touched upon that saying, well, with his style of talking... Uh, right, where is it? Analyse over the years. She, yeah... Also bringing up, she waited days after he was missing with all his style of talking and past actions. He'd be gone three to four days. But this is the thing, Silverheels. If Kenny Veach wasn't talking to her previously about being suicidal or having issues like that, and Kenny was doing his hikes back then when he appeared okay and the girlfriend wasn't worried about him, then maybe there wasn't as much concern whether Kenny Veach reported back, returned back on the day he said he was going to return, right? With time... You know, if if you do respond back late, return back late, family members, friends could become more used to that and think, oh, well, he's probably just taking his time like how he normally does. But is this a normal occasion? Because fast forward from the past of what Kenny's routine may have been like and how family, friends, girlfriend responded to and accepted once Kenny supposedly reached out to Sharon and shared his issues and being suicidal, supposedly, you would think that from there on then, that Sharon would be like, right, you got to respond back, you got to let me know. And there was that talk about within a five-day period, if you don't respond back, then I'll uh, call someone, you know, authorities to get help or to some kind of intervention. But in the moment of Kenny going out there hiking, like how Jeff Clark says, is it a good idea to be letting someone like that out there when there could be a risk to themselves? So for Kenny to just go out there, we're telling Sharon what he supposedly said, and Sharon just saying, okay, you go out there, two, two day, overnight stay, whatever, and let me know when you get back, etc. And that didn't happen. And seven, eight days later, oh, now I'll report him missing. Yeah, why not? just seems very casual lacklustre because the moment, despite what the routine was like in the past, the moment someone does start displaying problems or issues, whether they open up or it's just visually um, clear to see, that routines can change or how people react and respond to routines can change, right? The moment you do see problems, right, and someone acting out, you, you might respond back quicker, you might demand an answer back quicker because you just don't trust that person anymore in what their original routine was like. Because now, with a, a visible issue, if the person doesn't respond back in time or doesn't return back in time, it might not be down to their usual lazy or casual approach routine to how they normally do stuff, but more so the problem and issue taking over their actions, their life. And um, I think in, in this case, the girlfriend supposedly knew that Kenny was a, a danger to himself and letting him go out there into the desert without any intervention. And even if that wasn't needed, without any urgency in reporting Kenny missing, it just seems a bit odd, right? I mean, the other question you could ask yourself, and I don't think it's been asked, when Kenny didn't respond back or return back in the given day he said he would return... Did Sharon make any attempts to call him? Were there any missed calls, messages sent to say, hey, are you coming back? Have you returned back? I want to know. If you don't, re if you don't respond back to me within the next few days, I'm going to call the police. You know, was there any missed text messages or calls by Sharon Pilgrim then from Kenny's phone? What was found on Kenny's phone? Besides Kenny's search history and 
photos and stuff, did Kenny have any missed text messages from Sharon? Because if not, then once again, it would highlight and reinforce that the girlfriend wasn't that concerned and there was no urgency. So yes, it does stand out and it's a bit odd. As for the observation made by Silverheels and other humans out there with time about Warlight Ref overthinking, the reality is in life, Warlight Ref overthinks in real life too. It's just why it is, it is why it is. But I'll tell you something, with a great degree of certainty and confidence that the moment I shut off, the moment I stop overthinking, is the moment hell breaks loose and things go wrong, bad stuff happens, and I get caught up in it. Bad stuff happens. The moment I shut off, the moment I'm no longer cautious, things happen. I've demonstrated it at times. I've, I've sacrificed myself to experiment to see what would happen if I stopped thinking, what would happen if I didn't do this or if I didn't do that, and bad stuff happens. And even other simple things is forgetting things, forgetting stuff. That's why you got to overthink to keep the mind active to remember stuff, right? There's all different ways around it. You could say a way of overthinking that's been demonstrated in cases what I've covered. I wouldn't say it's caused problems. It's actually made situations a bit easier because what's ended up happening with putting that time and focus into the overthinking of that stuff I've not really been overthinking about in real life stuff. So what do you call it? Transferring it in different ways into other areas. Whereas it could be seen as a problematic trait to be an overthinker. It's problematic. It's, it causes more problems than it's worth. Well, if you, ca if you can't get rid of it, but you can put it elsewhere into something, that's a positive. It just so happens that the overthinking within these cases and stuff is what's led to this consistent ongoing coverage, hence why it's been kept alive, the story of Kenny Veach or Dylan Rounds, hence why predictions made by me over time have been 99% accurately correct and predicted. And with time, people have maybe learned from that and have adapted themselves and have prevented themselves from getting hurt down the line. So really, you take that one thing away, the overthinking part, a lot is lost from it. So that's why it needs to remain, okay? You know, if you don't overthink, do you think at all? Or do you just go with the flow? But if you completely just go with the flow, are you completely brain dead, right? Now, in general, I think with silver heels, okay, maybe things have shifted with time, maybe certain thoughts and opinions, the outlook on Sean Pilgrim, maybe some of us in between, yeah, hopefully Jay Subheels see this video and leave the comments down below. And just people in general, feel free to leave your comments down below. I remember in the past when um, the penguin was put in front of the top, it kind of stands quite well. I mean, it covers the mouth, so if I'm talking, you don't know if it's coming from me or the penguin itself. So it'll be interesting to see if Jay Silverheels does respond, even just Jay Chuck. One thing to acknowledge, and I don't know when it will come out, but I'll try and let people know, J Chuck has his own experiences in terms of hiking out there with some weird encounters and just like SB Vegas adventures. J Chuck said he's trying to find some footage and, and trying to release it publicly as well so others can see and hear what he was on the receiving end of, which sounds very interesting and also a bit spooky. We'll see how time goes and how things play out there. But I do think that at times when creepy, strange things happen, maybe you're getting closer to the truth. Or you've been around long enough to see the resistance and a force out there dark and maybe trying to prevent people from searching and investigating. And if that was ever a point, you know, and it was reinforced that there is someone or something out there trying to deter people, then maybe the case is more important than you think and deeper than ever. What is out there? Is it protecting something? preventing people from getting to a location. Probably not this penguin, but it would melt in the desert, unfortunately. But in general, we'll see what happens next. There is still coverage to do on this case and maybe some more visual observations and findings too. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video in some way or another, and hopefully Jay Silverheels continues to be active in the case. 
leave it there for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye and good night.